Well, it's great to be together again today. Welcome to this moment around God's Word and prayer. We are up to our last week in the book of Proverbs. We've been going chapter by chapter, and we're in chapter 26 today. Chapter 26, we're going to visit uh, two verses back to back that seem contradictory. Sometimes the Proverbs are a little hard to understand if you'd understand the literary style and the literary tools that are used. There's a lot of parallelism in, in Proverbs, and even occasionally, like we encounter here, uh, the use of contradiction to make a point. So verses 4 and 5 of Proverbs 26. Do not answer a fool according to his folly, or you or yourself will be just like him. And the next verse Answer a fool according to his folly, or he will be wise in his own eyes. So here's a contradiction. Don't answer a fool, otherwise something bad's going to happen. And the next verse says, yes, answer a fool, otherwise something bad's going to happen. If you don't answer a fool, then, then you've not lowered yourself to the fool's level. The fool is the personification. Everything is opposite to wisdom and integrity and substance in life. So... You know, we all know that. You know, you, you try to play a fool's game and you just look like a fool yourself. The next verse, however, says if you don't answer a fool, then um, your silence may be interpreted by the fool as validating his or her point of view. So, so in verse 4, don't answer a fool, otherwise, otherwise you'll be just like him. The next one, but answer a fool, otherwise the fool will think they're right. So which is it? And some of the ancient rabbis who used to study the Hebrew text of the Old Testament, they, they came up with the fear theory that verse 4 referred to secular things. So with secular things, uh, you know, don't lower it yourself and answer fool. But verse 5 applied to spiritual things. However, you want to correct someone if they're wrong spiritually. However, that doesn't solve all the problems. And that probably is not what Solomon was trying to say. What he's trying to say is that life's complicated, right? And these are two pieces, two aspects of one general truth. It's how we deal with people in our lives who are not wise. And, and he's saying in some cases, you don't answer them. Like, like when, when it would just lower you to their level. Like when someone says to you, you got a crooked nose. You know, well, they're just messing with you, right? So what are you going to do? Try to prove you don't have a crooked, no crooked nose? I mean, you, you just end up looking like a fool yourself. Sometimes... You just don't, you don't want to, you don't need to answer. But that doesn't deal with the complexities of life. There are other times in life where the lesser evil is to not be silent. So if a fool said to you, not you got a crooked nose, but if a fool says, I'm going to kill you, uh, th that's something you probably better answer. Uh, there, it's, it, it, it's less of an evil to speak up rather than to stay silent. Life's full of these kind of complexities. In fact, the Proverbs themselves are these general principles that, that appear to broad swaths of life. And yet here, we, we see that complexity of life um, unpacked in a little bit more detail. There are times to respond to foolish people, and there are times not to respond to them. But verse 27 of, of this same chapter kind of reminds you and me of a, an important principle. It says, whoever digs a pit will fall into it. If someone rolls a stone, it will roll back on them. So here again, you see the parallelism. This is a synonymous parallelism. In other words, both lines say roughly the same thing, but in different words. Whoever digs a pit will fall into it. If someone rolls a stone, it's going to roll back on them. And it's saying, no matter how you respond to people in life, no matter what you do in life, be careful because, um, you know, it comes back on you. Paul would put it this way in the New Testament. He'd say, the things you sow, you're also going to reap. So these things are, are just pieces of wisdom for us. There's times to speak. There's times not to speak. May God give us all wisdom in discerning what it is throughout the many complexities of life. And yet understand that what you do or don't do has a way of coming back on you. So let's pray about that together. Lord, we need your wisdom. We, we need the instincts relationally you alone can give us to know when to speak, when not to speak, and, and to understand that what, what we put out in our life 
it tends to come back to us. And we, we just pray that we'll put out that which is nourishing and good and encouraging and right. We pray, Lord, that you'll give us grace in all our conversations today, Lord, realizing that things we say do come back on us, but help us to speak wisely. Help us to deal with everyone where they are. And may Jesus love and live and speak through us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.